My name is Olu Shegun Moku Olu, and you are welcome to my live audio on Facebook. Uh, recently, uh, I think yesterday or so, I shared a post where I said that um, if you hear anyone saying, if I be a man of God, that Satan is speaking through them. You see, we have had many things or we are used to many things in the body of christ that we don't give a second thought or a deep thought about you will recall that uh, in the gospel after jesus was baptized god said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That was the verdict of God. Okay, so there is no contention about that verdict. But then, while Jesus was in the wilderness, the devil came and said to him while he was in the wilderness that if he is the Son of God, let me actually read it from uh, the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 3. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Now, look at this statement that looks like an harmless statement. But it's coming from the devil. God said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. The devil said, If thou be the son of God, turn this stone to bread. In other words, the devil is saying, among many other things, prove yourself to be the son of God. Prove to me that you are the son of god yet god has not called jesus to prove himself to anybody the devil is commanding him and say prove to me that you are the son of god we see that jesus didn't respond to that statement he says see you know when jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of the lord Jesus is saying, I have nothing to prove to anybody. My life is simply about living in the word of God. My life is not to prove myself to someone. My life is to simply live by the word of God. If God asks me to do something, I do it. If he it, if it does not ask me to do anything, I don't do it. I owe no man any obligation to prove anything to them. But do you know that this is the same statement you will hear some men of God making today? And do you know where they copied it from? From Elisha. When the king sent for Elisha to be brought to him, the soldiers will stand and say, Thou man of God, come down. And Elisha will say, if I be a man of God, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. And fire indeed came down. Now, this is how children of God are deceived today. The Bible talks about rightly dividing the word of truth. And they use all these type of scriptures to manipulate those who are not rooted in the word of God. Elisha who asked fire to come? And fire indeed came down by God. When the disciples of Jesus were passing by with Jesus and they did not allow them to pass through Samaria, the disciples suggested to Jesus, they said, shall we call fire like Elisha on these people? They wanted to call fire to destroy people. And Jesus said to them, the Son of Man has not come to destroy men, 
but to save so but to save them in other words jesus disapproved of what elisha did it was a misuse of the power of god but you see because we have not been taught certain things we we, we struggle in, be, in being able to discern the scriptures until jesus christ went to the cross everybody who served the lord were under the flesh they all carried the adamic nature the satanic nature the sinful nature the flesh and so even at their best they still walked in the flesh but in christ jesus the flesh had been put to the cross we are not a generation that is looking for the for the spirit of elisha i still hear people ignorantly say today we need the days of elijah we need the spirit of elijah how do what do you want to do with the spirit of elijah or the spirit of elisha or the days of elijah what do you want to do with those days you want to call fire down and consume people when we already have the Holy Spirit, what spirit again are you looking for? If after the Holy Spirit you are looking for another spirit, you will end up with demonic spirits. We are not looking for the days of Elisha or Elijah. We are looking for the day of Christ. We are looking for the day of the Lord. It's now about Jesus. So I cannot stand and say, if I be a man of God, so I'm trying to prove myself. God has not called anybody today to prove himself. All you need to do is to preach Jesus. You are not to prove yourself. All you need to do is to preach Jesus. So when you hear somebody say, if I be a man of God, is it that there is a false prophet or is ignorant of the covenant of Christ. There is no other way. Is it that there is a false prophet? Or is ignorant of the way of Christ? So it is foolishness to be saying, if I be a man of God. You know, we are so used to these things, we don't give some thought to it. And people will defend it. We don't understand the gospel. The gospel, it's about Jesus. It's not about me as a, as a servant of God. I've got nothing to prove to anybody. I'm not doing anything to prove anything to anybody. Did you know that there are people who are praying for miracles so that people can know that God is with them? You see, God, God is not involved in those kind of things. God is not interested in proving any man. God wants to prove Jesus. So it's not about if I be a man of God. That's nonsense. It's got nothing to do with me. You see, if you are not careful, <laughs> people will deceive you with the Bible. The best way to deceive a Christian is to open the Bible. Because if you are not discerning, you don't understand that the Bible has to be rightly divided. Anybody can read anything to you and they will tell you and say, it's in the Bible. Everything is in the Bible. The words of Satan, they are in the Bible. The words of God, they are in the Bible. The words of men, they are in the Bible. How do you then know what you are supposed to believe or what you are supposed to follow? That is where rightly dividing the word of truth comes in. And that's why some men are called and gifted in this area to teach the word of God. Not everybody can. He gave some to be teachers. He gave some to be prophets so that they can understand the mystery of the word of God and be able to divide it for you. So if I open the Bible now and I said, Elisha said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. And fire came down. And I said, if I be a man of God, let all your problems disappear. You will think what I'm doing is wrong. It's not right. I'm actually walking in the flesh. 
I'm actually walking by the spirit of Satan, not the Holy Spirit anymore. I'm walking in the flesh. Elisha, Elijah, Moses, all of them, they were not born again. That's why none of them were set for us as an example. The only example for us is Jesus Christ. The message is Christ. The gospel is Christ. We've got nothing to prove to anybody. If I be a man of God, can you imagine? That is exactly what the devil said to Jesus. If thou be the son of God, turn this stone to bread. Do something. Prove something. Is that not what they are doing today? They are doing everything to prove something to you. Men want to prove themselves. Please, what do we have in ourselves that we want to prove? What does anybody stand to gain if you are proving that you are a man of God? It is not your business to prove yourself. You have been called to preach Jesus. Be careful. You know, we hear those, this kind of statement these days. And you don't even give any thought to it. You don't see any danger in it. Go and check the life of those men that make this kind of statement. I can tell you up front, their life is not right. Go and check it. Name them. Their life is not right. You think that because somebody is popular, he understands the gospel? Many popular preachers today do not understand the gospel. There are many unknown unassuming, who are laboring, who are striving for the gospel. So don't get carried away with empty statement, with statement in the flesh. The other day, somebody slapped a girl. A girl said she, she, has, she has evil spirit or she, she's a witch or something like that. And then the man of God slapped him. He slapped the girl. People were in that assembly. They kept quiet. They kept quiet. Why will you slap somebody who, who is saying to you that he, he has an evil spirit? Why? What you need to do is cast the evil spirit out. But people kept quiet. And this deception continued. How do you think Europe got to the point? We are in Europe. In many places now, you cannot say homosexuality is a sin. You cannot discipline your child. I saw a man recently who was sacked because of his faith in Jesus in Europe. 70% of the younger generation in the United Kingdom say that they don't believe there is any God. 70%. Imagine what will happen in the next 30, 40 years. Do you know why? We are keeping quiet. We are, you see, many people have become advocates of false prophets. Many Christians are putting the rod of God upon their own lives because they have become the defender of false prophets. They say, no, don't talk about them. Leave judgment to God. Who is judging? The scripture says that you should test all spirits. For there are many false prophets in the world. He said, believe not every spirit. If the Bible is saying you should not believe every spirit, you will be a fool to believe every spirit. He said that, but you should judge. You should test. How do you test? It means you come to a conclusion. That this one is a genuine prophet. This one is a false prophet. If you can't make that distinction, you will be deceived. That's why many people will be deceived by the Antichrist. Do you know why? They will be saying, oh, don't judge him. Because the Antichrist is going to present himself as a prophet of God. He is going to present himself as Christ. And believers will be saying, don't judge him. They've so much brainwashed you that you don't even know what the scripture asks you to do again. Did you, did you read anywhere in the Bible that says you must not discern? 
The book of Revelation chapter 2. Let me read it to you. Revelation chapter 2. That's the words of Jesus Christ himself. You know, because I don't even understand anymore whether we are reading the Bible. Let me read Revelation chapter 2 for you. Speaking to the church in Ephesus, here's what Jesus said to that church. Listen carefully. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil and has tried them we say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. I just read the statement of Christ to you. He said he was commending this church because some, some people say we are apostles. The church said, okay, let's test. We want to know whether you are a genuine apostle or not. At the end of the day, they found them that they were liars. Jesus commended them because they were able to discern false apostles from true apostles. Today, anybody rises up, they call themselves apostles, you call them apostles. You are putting yourself under the wrath of God. The Bible says, be not a partaker of other people's sin. You are defending what you don't know. You are saying, don't judge them, don't judge them. Do, do you know what you are doing? You think we have any business judging anybody? You think I want to rise up and wake up in the morning and what I'm concerned myself with is judging anybody? But I have responsibility under God to discern whether you are a false apostle or not. And if I say you are a false apostle, I'm not judging you. I'm obeying the commandment of God. But to you today, anybody can come and call themselves anything you believe it. You will even be the one saying, don't judge them. Leave judgment to God. When God himself says you should test our spirit. That's why you have been hearing things. Your life has not changed. You have remained in one spot for years. Because the people that are speaking to you, they are not of God. And you are not ready to change. I don't have business with anybody's life, but I have business with the word of God. We have business to do what the scripture says we should do. Test our spirit. Why? There are many false prophets. Can't you understand the meaning of many? Should we not be careful if he says there are many? Don't you have responsibility to protect young Christians? I was saying to somebody, I said, Bushiri is a false prophet. I wrote it publicly. She said, why are you, why are you, why are you judging? Leave judgment to God. I said, how, how come they have brainwashed you so much? I have young believers who are watching TV. I don't want them to watch Bushiri. He's fraud and he's a false prophet. It's obvious. I have responsibility. You know, Paul was talking about a man. I think Alexander the coppersmith. He said, he did me much evil. He was warning Timothy against that man. We have responsibility to teach people and say, see, these people are false. They are false. They are doing program. Can, is it not, I don't know how we have learned. We have... Um, we don't have the, sun, the sunny spirit any longer. People will give microphone to demons to speak. And you think they have, they have God? You think that is promoting Jesus? Did you see anywhere in the Bible where they're asking demons to continue to speak? When you check all of, this, all of these TV stations and these men, did you not notice that they make effort for people to give testimony to prove the man of God. So all this statement is, you know, when the man of God prophesy, I know the man of God is true. I know the man of God is true. Everything is about the man of God. It's not about Jesus. And yet you are still not discerning. If you can't discern these this, this frosters, how are you going to discern the Antichrist? How are you going to discern the Antichrist? 
Be careful. Stop defending false prophet. Otherwise, you will put yourself under a curse. I'm warning you. If you don't understand something in the scripture, hold your peace. Hold your peace. So to say that if I be a man of God is a wrong concept in the body of Christ. Very wrong concept in the body of Christ. I pray God will give you understanding. I pray you make your ways right. We are entering a time when things will not be the same in the world again. If, if your Christianity is still this one that you will be defending false prophet, you are, you are gone already. You will go with them. I'm not cursing you. I'm telling you what will happen to you. I'm warning you. Take your Bible and read. Sit down. Get to understand the mind of God. Anybody that is not promoting Jesus is not of Christ. We have nothing else to preach. We have nothing else to do. The message is Jesus. We have been called to preach a person. We are to bring people in relationship with Jesus, not with a commission. Not with a ministry. Not with a building that have become our idols. We boast about 100 seater auditorium. We cannot boast about 10 souls. And you are still there. Defending false prophet. You cannot defend the gospel. You are defending false prophet. You cannot stand for the name of Jesus. You are standing for the name of false prophet. You are standing with people who are destroying the body of Christ. And you think you won't go down with them. You can't kick against the prick. If you don't repent, you will go down with them. How could you not know that somebody giving microphone to demon is they are all from the pit of hell? You say, oh, they are so nice. They are giving things out. You think the devil is not nice? You think the devil doesn't give things out? Go ask people who serve him. How do you think the devil is going to deceive you? You think he's going to come like an abalist? The devil is on the pulpit. Many pulpit is filled with the Antichrist. The Bible said there are many. He didn't say few. He didn't say some. He said there are many false prophets. Many false prophets. Unfortunately, many are defending them. There are people who have never seen them share one message of Jesus. But if they hear anything against their men of God, they are up in arms. Those days are over, brethren. God himself said in his word, he said, I am a consuming fire. Don't stand against God if you don't understand something I tell you, keep your peace. When Ahab was to be destroyed, there were 400 prophets who were lying. There was only one who was telling the truth. If it were today, you will say, don't touch those prophets, leave them. And that's why they are destroying Christianity. You say Islam is taking over. Why will they not take over? Is there the power of Christ in what we are doing? Is, where is the power of Christ? All the cloud we gather, all that we claim to gather every Sunday. Where is righteousness in our land? Do we even have that righteousness in the church? Pastors will divorce their wife and continue to preach. You are telling me, don't judge them. The Bible says if a man cannot rule his own house, how shall he rule the house of God? You are saying I should not judge. Am I the one judging? The word of God says, if he can't maintain marriage, how can he maintain my church? 
but they are divorcing and they are continuing with ministry and you are sitting under their teaching and you think you won't go down with them. If he can, what is he preaching? If you are preaching Jesus and that Jesus cannot keep one woman in your house, what then are you preaching to others? Because the message is Christ. If you don't have that life of Jesus to live with one woman, how can you claim that you are pastoring one million and you are sitting under them? You will not rise up. You will not speak for the Lord. And you think you will end well. You are defending men. You are not defending God. You are on the side of men that are against God. Men that don't want God's children to see the light. Who prefer to keep them in bondage so that they can continue to take money from them. Didn't you see Bushiri the other time? What was he asking for? Money. They send in your tithe. Send in your money. Don't listen to what they say. Send in your money. That's the man you are defending. He's serving his own kingdom. He's not of the kingdom of God. I said this without any apology. Without any apology. If you like, continue. Continue to defend them. Continue to speak for them. You are not preaching gospel. You are defending false preachers. When last did you tell anybody about Christ? No, it doesn't matter to you, but it matters to you once anybody speaks against your idol that you come servant of God. You are quick in arms. Don't judge them. I've shown you from the scriptures. It says, test all spirit. How do you test? You make judgment. You make judgment. If you want to buy things, you look at the two, you judge which one is better than the other. You judge men when you hear them. You don't just hear men, you judge them. If I know you are not from God, I don't listen to you. You can't pollute my spirit. I don't listen to you. That is my responsibility under God. You see, you have been so brainwashed. They want you to hear them. They want you to even fight for them. They tell you, you must recite. I believe in my pastor. I love my pastor. I love what nonsense. And you are reciting that up and down. And you are saying you are man, you're man of God. You are a takeover generation. You are living in sin. You say you are a takeover generation. What do you want to take over? You say you have dominion. Adam had dominion when he didn't disobey God. As soon as he sinned, dominion finished. You are living in sin. You say you have dominion. Over what? The Bible says sin shall not have dominion over you. They tell you you are breaking all limits, but you cannot break the limitation of sin over your life. They tell you that it's your turn to shine. Did Jesus not say to you that let your light shine? Why are you waiting on cue to shine? He says, let your light shine so that men can see and glorify your Father in heaven. How many people are giving praise to God on account of your life? But you are there defending false prophets. They are deceiving you. I just pray God give you understanding. I pray God give you understanding. So that statement, if I be a man of God, is not from the Holy Spirit. It's from the pit of hell. It's a statement of self. It's a statement of flesh. We are not proving anything to anybody. I'm not going to preach to prove myself to you that I'm a good preacher. I'm not going to heal people just because I have the gift of healing to prove it to you. God is the only person who can heal. God is the one who has all the message. And Jesus is the only message. I have nothing to prove to anybody 
My only responsibility is to preach Jesus. So I cannot come and tell you and say, if I be a man of God. Jesus, God said, you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The devil come and say, if thou be the son of God. That's what the devil is saying to those men of God. And they are falling for it. He's telling them, if you be a man of God, ah, uh ah, -uh, you should be able to do this. And so they are going to prove to the devil that they are men of God. Be careful, brethren. This is the day we must have discernment. This is the day we must have boldness. This is the day we must have courage. When the children of Israel were sinning and cheating, he killed 24,000 himself on one day. But Phanias took javelin and he struck dead the man and the woman that were fornicating in the camp right when they were pleading with God. And when God saw him, oh, God said, ah! He told the angel, stop, stop killing them. Stop killing them because of what this Phanias has done. I'm going to make a covenant of peace with him. God has a covenant of peace with men that preaches against sin. He gave him the covenant of peace. If it were today, what will you say? You will judge him. You will say, he doesn't bring any positive word to people. You will say, he's only condemning people. Let me tell you something. Nothing comforts a soul like truth. And nothing destroys a soul like flattery. We are to comfort people with truth. Did you see Jesus going about telling people, Oh, I love you. You know, you are wonderful. You are beautiful. That's what some of us call gospel. I see people who, can, who, who have not made an attempt to win one single soul. And they'll be telling people who are winning souls every day that, see, your method is not good. You are too, you are too harsh. I'd rather be harsh so that people can make heaven than to be nice and people go to hell. Jesus told people, he said, if you don't repent, you will likewise perish. He warned them, he said, I will remove your candlestick. Jesus doesn't make empty threats. He doesn't make empty threats. If he says something, he meant it. He said, whom I love, I chastise. Throw away this, your romantic idea of love. If the Holy Spirit doesn't rebuke you, he is not in you. Anybody who has the Holy Spirit in them will know about the rebuke of the Holy Spirit. At times when I say things that are not, that is not lie, but maybe a little exaggeration, the Holy Spirit rebukes me and says, my son, you are lying. And I have to say, Lord, I'm sorry. And I have to try to balance what I'm saying again so that it fits in, it fits in perfectly to the Holy Spirit. That's the way the Holy Spirit works. Do you think me, as his son, I will work differently? What good news are you, are you expecting apart from the good news of Jesus? What good news do you want? Be careful. We are entering a difficult time. COVID-19 is nothing compared to what is coming, but many of you are not ready. You are not ready. All you are praying for is for this thing to be over so that you can go back to your pursuit of money. You are not pursuing God. They keep telling you you will be great. How long will you live? How long are you going to live? You are already great. Jesus said the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. You are already greater than Abraham. Some of you are still praying for the blessing of Abraham. But Jesus said you are greater than Abraham. You are greater than Solomon. You are greater than David. You are still pursuing greatness. I pray it will not be too late for you before you realize it. And pursue Jesus. Anything you are pursuing, <laughs> that is not Christ. My brothers and sisters, you are wasting your time. I don't care what anybody is preaching to you. They are wasting your life. They are wasting your time. The message is Christ. He has given unto us all that pertain to life and godliness. We are in Christ Jesus. Everything you need in life is located in that man. 
Pursue him with all of your life. Let Jesus be your only single pursuit in life. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.